Well, hello everyone. And so, I just got back from Transformers Rise of the Beast, and with some people already saying it's probably the best of the live action and film since the 07 one. I'm just going to go out and get my hot take initially, and even though it's, oh, it's not quite the breath of fresh air that Bumblebee was for me, it's arguably, in many respects, even better than the, he, he first one from 07, and there's not going to be any major spoilers, healers, in this review, so I'm gonna, it's going to take some time before I get my Paramount Plus account worked back out, so I can probably do that whenever it streams there, or comes out on Blu-ray, but still. So let's begin. The film well, mainly takes place in the year 1994 and follows a couple young hunsters from New York City, including Noah, uh, played hated by Anthony Ramis from In the Heights, and Elena, played by Dominique Fishback, and Noah's case, he's trying to make ends meet while caring, helping care for his single mother, as well as his younger brother Christopher, who has sickle cell anemia. Uh, and one night, he ends up, up in trying to do a job for a friend of his, and ends up coming across Barrage, voiced by Pete Davidson, who's been really fun in all the other movies, and look how easy that came out there. And a wisecracking in a robot the Vincent Portia. Yes, please. He's, and also, he and Elena get pulled into the conflict at revolving on an artifact known as the Transwarp Key, which could bring in the deadly Unicron to Earth, and they had to request the help of the Maximals. So, yeah. Hmm. I'll buy the Maximal shirt that I'm wearing. I mean, the Inclusion Beast Wars characters, and I turn my original hat backwards. The the inclusion of them in 1978 and what sold me on this movie. And even though it would have been interesting if we got some of the original voice actors back, like how Peter Cullen, even though he's, he's passing a torch to someone else on, on some cartoons, he's still willing to play the role in live action. And... I think the ones I did go with are quite good choices, and including David Sobolov as Rhinox, Ox, Ox, Ron Perlman as Primal, and areas are being voiced by Michelle Yeo of Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. So, definitely should more than qualify to voice like a giant robot, hot, hot bird. And even though she ends up, up getting quite a bit in there, a lot of things that happen to existing players, like say what happens at Bumblebee, he, he definitely makes it interesting whatever they're going to be doing next. That said, it does make the most hopeful I've been along with Bumblebee for the future of Transformers on film that I have been in years. The first reason for this is that the story was like the last movie is a bit more coherent, focused, and and also a bit more or substance than just as in terms of character and progression than in terms of both the humans and the robots than just trying to get together. I mean they're especially in the case of Transwarp Key, which as the many, many MacGuffins who have been in the live action in the installments alone is one of the ones that makes the most logical sense because even people who aren't the most well versed in the lore could at least understand instantly as the mayor transporter that could bring Unicron and other Terracons to Earth, I mean, including Scourge, who is the main villain in this picture, I mean, I mean, since they do some interesting things, things with his underlings, such as Battle Trap and Aviation the Nightbird. Heard and even though it's not exactly the same as it was in the TV shows, it at least made more sense the change that they decided to make around how brutal Scourge can be. And basically, if you see Unicorn like Galactus, as then Scourge can basically act like his herald, basically a more corrupt Silver Surfer, 
if he's coming, you know, Unicron is not far behind either. Another thing that I definitely managed to take away the way Karthi from Bumblebee was it helps when the action is actually able to be coherently made out. I mean, be able to tell one robot from another. Or that, that while there is still some Bayham since Michael's producing these movies, he's basically stepped back and let other people work their magic, giving them um, millions of dollars and telling them go nuts, which... Under these circumstances, definitely pretty neat, given how looking at the behind the scenes material, trying to create parts that no longer exist, and a bunch of robots never existed at all. All that. It's definitely the kind of movie I actually could see coming out, out in the actual 1990s that had the technology we do now. I mean, this is a little half turns involved in this, this puppy, I mean, and I'll figure that out later. And. I'm not sure if they uh, about making like a Jedi crossover right away, but I would not object to it after they made a Vigilant and this new cartoon, and especially they treated Snake Eyes like never happened. It does give comments how I'd handle that this adaptation of Mash been trying to get made for a while, as well as a potential future their future Power Rangers reboot they're working on, and that's because of, like the shirt that Chris is wearing here in an early scene. And of course, they have like the soundtrack with like all the rap music, lots of Toys B.I.G., all Cool J, Diggle Planets. I'll definitely see if I can find the others online I'm fairly soon. And especially given how was uh, how the coding switch of Sonic and Tails, nice synergy with the '90s IP and other Paramount movie fans have got in their hands. Yeah, while I enjoy both this. And Spider for different reasons. I know only one of them can be number one again this weekend. And then. And so it should be interesting to see how this plays out. And. Okay, so you apparently bring the arms out. And the legs. That's sticky. Yeah, I'll just keep trying to figure this out as I get to the coming attractions. And I'll say this. Oh, there it goes. Got something going on here. I will definitely say that this movie, I'm very much open to a third one, especially hey, given how they seem to be heavily implying it's not going to be the last we have seen a Unicron, which like has not been other continuities. So I give this an optimal three and a half stars out of four, four and a half stars out of five, and now. Let's try to get this transformed on Zingling Attractions. Okay, so got the arms out and kind of keep things chronologically speaking in order. So next week, my belated thoughts on, okay, so that's up the on the third and final trailer for The Flash. And even though it's probably the most most clear look at the plots that I've seen, even with all the drama that's been going on, and still am not sold on going right away. If you want to go to it, I'm not going to try and stop you, but just let me know, just know, know that you're going to be the test doctor for it, since I'm not going to be. I mean, I have at least heard good things about Keaton coming back as Batman, and... And Salsa Kyle is Supergirl. Hopefully she'll be back for the reboots. And... But still... I... This definitely is coming along. Alright. Hey, we... It's... Definitely looking... It has not been, like, the one the best one I've seen. That's other people are trying to claim. At least of all the studio. I do kind of like these Pink Floyd's Time, which does at least fit somewhat. Even if it's a bit kind of snidery and obvious song choice. Nice. If all this fails and if I'm not swayed, I'm just gonna wait for it to come on max. Who knows? Don't worry, I'll get this. I'm mostly gonna just see Elemental, whether or not my nephew's gonna be visiting me for his birthday. We'll see. You hmm. know, got transformed. I guess the midsection is a little stiff. And on that note, Indiana Jones, Dial of Destiny. Hey, 
definitely a long 4th of July weekend, and that one I feel more suspicious about how the, what people are saying, and because I think it looks like it's going to be much like the other movies, just like a pure, fun adventure in the vein of the Pulp films of inspiration. I'm binging the other movies as well as, as the Onion Jones TV series online before I, I see it. And definitely going to miss Ford as Indy when all is said and done. And... It's also not the only blockbuster franchise that's going to be a, a ending its impact on my culture. And yeah, so not a little bad. Apparently they changed the head sculpt a little bit as well. So there's that. Mm -hmm. July 12th, the first part of Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning with the other parts, barring anything going on with a strike due out next year. The two-part series finale to the long Mission Impossible film series is set to go off with a bang. And with both parts being filmed with a record $290 million budget, and see a bit of that money on the screen. And even with uh, Tom's infamy and his personal life. So let's just say that Miller is not the first person I've dealt with who has had like a kind of touchy personal life. I understand why Tom keeps getting work and... Holy shnakey, that is a great stunt there where he motorcycle jumps off a cliff and into a base dive. For real. And he's old enough to be my dad, so. And when you have a person in his position, and figure you basically have nothing to lose at this point, so. Yeah, I'm definitely keeping an eye on this one. And as I mentioned before, I want to go Pamela Clause where you count again so I can do my retrospective of the other movies as well. Just my own taste that back is all. Okay, mm. so July 21st, Oppenheimer, which he took with Nolan to the Universal after breaking off ties with Warner Brothers, which, given the current state of the company, he definitely chose to do it at the right time. And the same day, Barbie, which looks very interesting for very different reasons, like how tall and chic it is. I did not know the arms could do that. I could do that. Where apparently it can also become... Like the gun on the movie that I just saw, I mean, where... And I would definitely agree with Damon's sentiment. I'm interested in both the very cheery, very movie about the toy, as well as a very dark, dramatic, prestige level war biopic for very different reasons. And, but I'm probably asking who's going to have enough time when he goes to one right away. I mean, depending on what people say, I'll probably give priority to Oppenheimer, most likely. So, mm. August 2nd, and the movie got moved up two days because of how confident Paramount's in it. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Butte and Mayhem, and the latest reboot of the Ninja Turtles franchise. I'm also going to be doing a new cartoon, and this is the Earth style, which I'm okay with. As is the as with the idea of having the turtles balance being Guardians of New York being just teenagers goofing around, practicing, and turtle practice on a roof, getting pizza, and... And also, I also like the little details, details that make it easier to tell them apart. You can forget what color mask they wear, what kind of weapon they use. I think it should be fun with this cast put together both newcomers and experienced players. And I actually am okay with Rogue Squadron they got, especially if they say the Shredder for a potential sequel to the TV show. Especially I could see like a credit scene or setup saying like, like if I am pleased it. He used to make an acquaintance or Urukusaki, and it could be like, like, my, I only for you people I know call me hey, that name. You may call me the Shredder. Hey, closing things out. Expendables four coming, I mean September twenty second. Not a huge fan of the other Expendables movies, but I least understand their appeal. Much like the action movies, like movies that they previously started in, is basically like a big, dumb, over the top of macho kind of team up with new players as well as uh, Stallone leading the charge once again. And maybe they won't do Peace 13, they did the last one. I gather a lot of people didn't really like that happening. Anywhere. Some things just are better already. Again, like with Oppenheimer, Heimer, it should be interesting 
see that kind of stuff because it's like in the sense of being fully adult in the sense of on top of the subject matter not being very kid friendly in that one i don't think most people under the age of 17 would find the subject matter of building in the bomb very fun either but still anyway get a lot to say for now and i'll see you all again soon Take care, everyone. Roll out.